Quad 6-6. Six, six. I have a theory. I have a theory about this Hummingbird board by Newbie Drone about what happened to this board. What do you mean what happened? Well, let's talk about some interesting things. So, some of the things that are really interesting about this board is what Newbie Drone managed to cram into this tiny little board. So this is a five-in-one board with a nice X profile. So it's a nice compact um, cross style profile, nice lightweight. And it has built-in Express LRS receiver. Yes, it's via SPI, but that's fine because it's a BMI 270 you're not gonna max out the CPU anyways. Um, and it has a built-in VTX, and specifically the VTX is a low power one. The VTX doesn't go up to 400 watts. It just does 25 watts, and I think that's it in pit mode. And it's got the other usual stuff of little solder tabs for the motor. They have their own plugs, but you can, you know, pull those off and whatever. And yeah, it comes with their um, PH2 connector, etc. but that's easy enough to change out. But it's got all these things that to me scream racer. It screams lightweight. We're not going far with this thing. We're going lightweight. We're all about performance, going fast. And that got me interested because I really wanted to build up a really lightweight whoop. You know, I wanted to build in that undercut the weight of my usual build. And they also, you know, when you buy this in the kit, um, they can come with their lightweight frame. And to me, it's just like, all of it screams racer. The thing, however, that is also interesting about this board is Newbie Drone's statement that it is not a do-it-yourself board. It is not a DIY board. And they're really adamant about that, which is funny to me because it's like, on paper, you built a racer board and now you're telling the racers to not go with this board. You're saying, hey racers, this board isn't for you even though on paper it's like, this board is for you. But I have a theory about why that happened. And to explain that theory, I'm gonna draw your attention. I built this up, by the way, and it didn't go well. And I'll show you why, I think, why it didn't go well. If we look right here, so see these little squares here? Those are the FETs, the FETs. I think that's what they are. But if you look at the FET, it sits really close to your um, motor solder pads. And do you see these little shiny dots? See on the black edge there? See how there's these three little dots? One, two, three silver dots shining there. Those are the pins for that FET. Do you see this FET over here? See how the pins are off to the side? This is how the pins are usually oriented. When you have them next to your solder pads like that, on every other board I looked at that I could find online or that I had laying around, these little pins are facing away from your solder pads. But on the Newbie Drone board, one of the FETs is always facing the motor solder pads. And these motor solder pads are pretty decently spaced. Like they're wider than if you pull a plug off of, you know, like a new or a beta FPV or happy model board. Um, but they're really short. There's not a lot of space there. So not only are these pins pointed at the motor pads, but there's also just not really much room at all. And so what happened, I think, is that when I soldered the motors on, I think it bridged the FET. And so as soon as I put power into the board um, to check it in, um, in BlueJay, I just wanted to see to see if it was on you know, 48 kilohertz and et cetera. It made a funny startup tone sound, had a kind of funny grinding sound and there was smoke and sure enough, the FET was gone. So what I think happened here is that I don't think Nubidrone intended this to not be this do itself. DIY board. I don't think they intended to have to say, hey, if you even solder to this thing, you void your warranty. Like a lot of boards say, hey, if you solder to it and you mess up your soldering, we the, the warranty is gone, right? A lot of manufacturers do that. A lot of manufacturers say, you solder bad, that's on you, that's not us, we're not honoring warranty. Newbie Drone went like two steps beyond that to say, even if you solder perfectly, we don't care. If you even try to solder to this board, you have no warranty, which is like a whole step beyond. And I think the reason that happened is because they realized that anybody who tries to solder motors to this board is running a very, very high risk of bridging that FET and burning FETs. And I think they just knew that that was a cluster in the making. And they said, okay, we're just gonna pivot around that um, 
and not redesign the board and we're just going to say this is not a do-it-yourself board and it's just for replacements just a kit only and that's it that's the end of the day so um yeah when i built up this board i checked i i had spotted this and in one point i think i bridged it and i thought i'd cleaned it up and i thought i had everything but i didn't like check continuity i didn't put a smoke stopper and all the rest of it and the reason i don't do all that stuff is because one, when I'm, when I'm building up these boards, I want to know if I can like use this as a test wheel. I want to know if, can I go ahead and change out the motors reasonably quick and not have to be like overly cautious about it and like be paranoid about things. Um, so I didn't, I wasn't like super meticulous. I was just my usual meticulous, which is actually pretty good. I pretty rarely destroy a board by building it up wrong now. Um, so I wasn't that worried about it, but in this case, this one got me. I may still buy one more of these boards knowing how cautious you have to be to not bridge that. And I might build up a board, not for my usual kind of test mules, but just one and a half, because I'm really curious to see how this builds up with a really light build. But you have to know that. If you're gonna build this, do it yourself. You gotta know about how tight this space is and how careful you have to be um, to not screw that up. The other thing you have to know is this board, right, you want to get as light as you can, so you're going to go with the, the Nano 3, right? You're going to go run cam Nano 3, and you're like, okay, I don't, yeah, they got their little plug, but I'm going to solder. Well, the issue you have there is there is no video pad input. The only video pad input is this pin. It's the pin furthest down this way on the connector. It's the pin furthest towards the middle. Um, you can pick up your 5 volt and ground off your other um, pads here but there is no video input. The only way to get video in is off that pin. And I was able to um, bring in my wire vertically. So I brought in the wire this way, like that. And I was able to solder it to that pin without that much difficulty. Surprisingly, that wasn't that hard. And then I just got my power um, from these pins. So that part's not a deal breaker to me. It's actually not that bad. The other option you do is you just go ahead and buy, they sell a little plug uh, pigtail and you just solder that to the camera. And so that's like, that's the pain in the butt step is you solder it to the camera and then once you have it on the camera, you just plug it in there. But I think you have to know about those things. If you're gonna try and build with this board, um, you gotta know about those two details. One, the camera has to go in through there. And then two, you gotta be meticulous. Yeah, there's the, you can see the pins right here on that fat. You gotta be meticulous when you're soldering these uh, motors on. There's the pins over there, right there. You just have to be meticulous when you're soldering those motors on to not bridge. Um, all it takes is just putting that wire just a tiny bit too far in towards the board and you will fry it like I did. And $50, try and figure out what else to do with this board with only three working um, ESCs. All right, um, that's what I have for right now. That's my theory. My theory is totally baseless, by the way. I have no real information about this. Uh, but to me, if you were truly building this as a non-DIY board, I don't think you would have put these pads on here. Uh, it's silly to put the pads on here and, um, and say you can't use them. The other thing to know, too, um, is it's easy enough to pull their plugs off the bottom here. You just take a, some side snips and you just, just literally snip it off and they come off real easy. But that doesn't help you any because look how small the pins are. So... When you plug in, those pins attach to these tiny little connections right here. And so those aren't solderable with any meaningful ease. You know, look how small that is. You, you just don't, you don't really get yourself a whole lot by pulling the, the plugs off and trying to solder to the other side because of how tight these are. These are definitely more reasonable size, but they're just too close to those pins on the fence. So you gotta know about that if you're gonna build with this board. Um, DIY, you gotta know about those issues. And I've got my conspiracy theory as to what happened. I think Nubi Drone commissions, commissions these, somebody else kind of designs and manufactures it. Nubi Drone doesn't really test it, maybe test a couple. They probably got some quick feedback and they said, yeah, just run it and we're covering it with the DIY build disclaimer. No warranty with soldering. All right, that's it for this one. Till next time, cheers.